I'm going to be talking to Dr. Feng Zhuo, who is an assistant professor in the UBC Faculty of Forestry and the Canada Research Chair in Sustainable Functional Biomaterials. And he's been involved in a very, very interesting project. In fact, it's a collaboration with the Wet'suwet'en uh, First Nation in British Columbia to make a bio a biofoam. Uh, so welcome to the interview, uh, Dr. Zhou. Yeah, thank you for having me, Mark. I'm, so I'm, it's my great pleasure to talk to you. Well, this is really interesting. And, and I am uh, so uh, impressed by the amount of science that's being undertaken and the innovations that are flowing out of that science. And of course, you know, the, the conversation around plastics and plastic pollution in oceans is a big one. And it sounds like your innovation has the uh, is a potentially a solution to that. Can you tell us uh, maybe just briefly uh, what it is and and how the you know how the the project how your your team developed this product? Sure. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, the plastic pollution in the oceans and also in the landfill is really a challenge right now. So it's a global issue. So th here's a this is the main reason that we want to develop materials that is more sustainable biodegradable and also renewable. Then we turn our eyes onto the nitro fiber. So those uh, waste waste fiber in the forest uh, after you know after mountain fire or after the mountain bee kill. So there's a lot of waste fiber in the forest. So therefore we want to create a material that can potentially replace some of the synthetic polymer being used in the packaging. For example, the one we are addressing is the styrofoam. Styrofoam has a lot of issue, as, as you can see, but it's widely used in the packaging as a protective layer. Uh, they are not degradable, so they, they have a lot of the, they, they, they are bulky and lightweight, so they fly with the wind, they fly with the torn. So uh, yeah, so and also they occupy a lot of space in the landfill, about 30% of the landfill is occupied by the uh, styrofoam. So the one we are creating has a similar property with styrofoam. The density is very close to styrofoam. And also it also is a thermal insulating. So it has a thermal insulation properties, which can be used for the keep, keeping uh, things warm or keeping things cold. So yeah, but the good thing is it's biodegradable. So we put in the in the in the soil, so it, it can degrade within like one to two months. Yep. Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, sounds like a, a quite an a, an important innovation. Mm -hmm. um, what role did the Wet'suwet'en First Nation play in the project? So we started this project about two years ago with the uh, Wet'suwet'en First Nation. So I met uh, Raj and uh, like a couple years ago. So uh, in a workshop, that workshop was organized by the Innovation uh, Bioeconomy and the Indigenous Re uh, uh, Office from the Ministry of Forage. So in the workshop, so I my my right and uh, we learn about their interest in utilizing their raw materials, utilizing the, the slashes from their, their forest. So we have been keep discussing about the ideas. So how we can find a more economic way and more uh, easier way to utilize those. Then uh, we came up with this idea and then we we were supported at together. So we wrote a proposal to the to the to the chief uh, to the office of chief forester in the main ministry of forest then the project was got funded and then we got the materials from the raw material from their their forest and then we have uh, you know the monthly meeting to discuss about what we are doing so what, what we are going to uh, uh, do for the next step yeah so they have been playing a meaningful role in this project uh, start including the helping to secure funding and helping to uh, deliver the raw materials for us to try so we have got the different types of raw materials from the wood chips you know so from the 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 the, the uh, small branches and all all, all sorts of different biomass you know in their forest uh dr Zhang, how economic how competitive is your biofoam uh with uh, with styrofoam is it a more expensive product uh if it is Will scaling up production bring the cost down so mm -hmm. that it's cost competitive with styrofoam? Yeah, this is a very good question. I think they say everybody is yeah is interested about the the you know the cost benefit for using the bio based materials. So as I observed on the market, so a lot of the, those bio based material, renewable material, biodegradable materials, they usually have some kind of environmental premium. 
right? So because um because because it takes time, it takes uh sometimes it takes a higher higher energy or more uh, work to produce, and therefore they probably they are twenty or to thirty percent more expensive than uh, than their synthetic counterpart. But for our biofoam, so we we have we we just did a quick calculation as you mentioned, like small smaller scale, like we scale to one ton one ton production. Uh, so it's now ex expensive than styrofoam. So so far, I don't have the cost uh, for the styrofoam. I, I I I don't have access to the database for how much it that it costs to produce a styrofoam. But what we can say, our cost of the producing the biofoam is about one fifth of the re retail price of the styrofoam. So yeah, so based on this, uh, you know, rough calculation, I think there should be a, a good uh, margin for for us to compete the cost for the uh, compete the price for the styrofoam. As you mentioned, when we scale up to you know, uh, uh, like one tons per per day or you know, large scale, so definitely it will bring bring down the cost. Well, yeah. that's fascinating because I I would think that if your if your product is one fifth the cost of the competitors retail, and that's your production costs, that you mm -hmm. would be competitive and maybe even at a lower cost. So this sounds very interesting. Now, where do you go from here? Do you is there a a startup company that gets spit that gets spun off that includes the Wet'suwet'en and mm -hmm. and then begins to you know get small scale manufacture and eventually scales up? Is that how this works? Yeah, so this is uh we we have that we share the technology uh with Uten First Nation and the UBC. So we share the technology, we share share the IP. So next time we will be working together to how uh uh how uh, uh probably you know can be a joint venture to uh to take this off to the market. And also we are planning to get a pilot plan. So this pilot plan will be uh we are hoping to launch a pilot plan next year, 2023, by 2023. So we will have the pilot plant in BC, somewhere in BC. It can be in the Burns Lake, their reserve, or it can be in Lower Mainland. So we are still discussing about this. So we want to use this pilot plant as a demonstration. So what we can do with the forest waste and how the indigenous people got involved on this project. And we want to, you know, so in the future, we can license the technology or we can we can do similar thing, the, the plan. We can help them to help other First Nation to design the plan or maybe help uh, license the technology to some bigger, you know, pop, uh, pop and paper company or forest product company. So I think there should be a strong interest in our technology and how we can take this into a market. Is, uh, can you give us an idea of how this uh, biofoam is made and, you know, how what the process is? And then uh, is that process easily scalable? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's very easy to scalable, as, as I can tell. So in the lab, we already have about two foot by two foot of the foam. So it's 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 pretty big. Consider uh, usually in the lab, so we have like a those smaller smaller sample, but here we have like this big sample. So uh, it's it's fairly simple. So all we need is, is we take the slices from the forest, and then uh, we we just grind them up, uh, grind them into a smaller fiber. And then within a smaller fiber, we're adding some uh, some environmental friendly chemicals, which will form which will form the sol solution. And then I trap some air in there. And then after that, we just put into the oven like baking. So also we don't need a very high temperature, just eighty degrees Celsius. Uh, so put in the oven for a couple hours. Uh, then then we got the foam. So yeah, in the industrial scale, so the the right now in the lab scale is limited by the the process usually limited by the heating by the by the drying step because we only have the conventional oven. But in the in the industrial scale, we were thinking maybe the like it can be continuous. So there's a more like a uh more efficiency in drying the sample, so it can be quick really quick. So yeah, so it's fairly simple. It just uh, I just uh. Use an analogy, uh, analogy like uh, cooking, so it's just like uh, you cooking with a fiber. Interesting. Uh, have you had any interest from packagers or from industry in the technology? There are. So I, I'm sure, as mentioned, there, 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 there should be a lot of. So our target, uh, you know, customer could be the packaging company, as well as those, uh, those uh, for, forest company. So the forest company, they also have a lot of raw material they want to utilize, though they don't have any use for their current product. So 50% of the 
of the tree harvest is left there. So, so they only use 50% of the trees for the dimension number and for the pulp. So, so they need to find a way to how to better utilize the other 50% because those are, uh, so in, in that case, they can make the whole tree being useful. They can make more economic returns. Uh, yeah, so we we will be discussing with some companies uh, to about the put the the future collaboration on this technology. Right now, we uh, uh, cannot cannot say too much, but uh, hopefully, I will, I will say we'll attract more and more uh, investors or company want to get involved in this technology. Uh, final question: uh, How long does it take your uh, product to break down? I understand the styrofoam takes about 500 years to, mm -hmm. to degrade. Uh, how long for your product? So first of all, I would say styrofoam takes more than 500 years. So 500 years, probably you don't see it, but they become microplastic. So they are still existing. They are not degraded. They, they're just too small that we cannot see, but they will enter into the food chain. They will enter into the fish, so the oyster and also the table salt, right? For our material, so it's a, it's pure biodegradable. So it can degrade, we, we, how we are doing the field test, we just put the material in the soil. It can degrade after one month, one, one to two months. Wow. Well, that's uh, and so uh, the obvious uh, solution, uh, the big application would be this solves the microplastics in the in the ocean issue, uh, yeah. because so what happens if you put your foam in the ocean, mm -hmm. uh, and it degrades? What happens? Does it affect the condition of the water, the acidity? The uh, do you know anything about that yet? Uh, we haven't done much. We will be doing some uh, water quality analysis, uh, but we assume because majority of the our material is the fiber, wood fiber. So in in the ocean, you can see a lot of logs in there. So they are they all all the log is shedding fiber. It's similar to the those log in the ocean. I don't think they will damage to damage anything of the water quality. But this is something we will be con conducting some research uh, to see how it will uh, affect the water quality. And uh, what kind of a timeline are we talking about here to get from where you are, which sounds like just you're at the pilot stage and and going to or you soon will be at the pilot project stage. Uh, how long before, uh, assuming you're successful, you get to full commercial production? Mm -hmm. So this is all uh, it's, it's a it's a big project. So if it's eventually want to replace all the star foam on the planet, so it's really a big project. So it's now me and also the First Nation, the, the university can do for the commercialization for the for the scaling up to the to the real production. So I think that depends on the investment. Uh, so we do need some kind of like entrepreneur. So who is really uh, uh, has has a vision to use this technology to work with us to uh, bring this to the market. So pilot plan will be next year. So once the pilot plan is uh, is done, so we'll we'll start to talking to all those big companies, our investors, and to see maybe we want to in in two two or three years we want to build a, a production plan in BC somewhere. So we can we can start to you you can start to seeing the products on the market. Excellent. Well, good luck with that. Thank you very much for doing the interview. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's my great pleasure.